name is Mark Lynn. I'm the Chief Instructor here at Hidden Sword Martial Arts. We are located in Roanoke, Texas. This is my student, Scott. And today we're going to be working on a staff form that I was taught um, almost 30 years ago. And back in the very early 90s, late 80s, and early 90s. And what we're going to do though is today we're going to translate the uh, staff form, or actually it's a Joe form, to also like the walking cane. We're gonna, the point is we're looking at the principles and concepts that are found within that form and then we're going to adapt them to a different weapon to see if those, um, you know, if the principles, the concepts, fighting theories, however you want to put it in there, um, you know, end up, end up uh, standing up. First off, the, Scott and I will go through the form and then we will start dissecting it and pulling it apart, okay? And last thing I wanna make clear of is that I am not teaching a pure art. I am not teaching, um, like I said, the Joe is a separate art, you know, the bow is another separate art, and things like that. We tend to blend these together, and so um, I think it's more important that we look at the weapons and start uh, seeing the commonality between the weapons and start pulling apart the, the concepts that are found within the, within the form itself as opposed to trying to work just, um, you know, really on perfect form and, and such like that. So these are not uh, katas that we practice all the time in class and yet they are, you know, when I teach them, they're part of our curriculum. So. With that being the case, come on back here, Scott. Okay, so from here, we're gonna start off here like this. Now this is um, really the first form that I teach. However, this was actually the third, the third Joe form that I learned. And it's a relatively short form. And so we're only gonna, just for demonstration purposes today, go through the go through the um, short, short, short form, the Joe. So we're gonna go here, come back, pull this back here, step forward, thrust, thrust, one straight turn, thrust. When we step back, go here, all right, and step back, to here, and then we turn. sequence here I want to talk about the teaching on that okay if if I'm here what I want to do is I want to have this the the Joe or the staff out here in front of me like this my other hand back here on my side and this like here this hand out here not up and not down just here in the middle relaxed like this is a walking stick and from here you reach forward, grab it, and slide back and come to this position here. And you want to have the weapon coming behind your leg, not out here to the side, nor behind you like this, so it's sticking out to the side. Okay, this is just here. The first teaching here I believe what's happening is that I take this and I put it back here behind my leg. Now I was taught this was to hide the weapon so that he could not tell how long my weapon was. So of course prior to him ever getting, you know, where I have this out, out in sight, if I'm noticing something's a threat, threat, it's me getting my weapon in, ready to draw, you know, to draw on him 
but I'm hiding it so he can't tell how long my weapon is. Okay, so our first our first drill here is if uh, Scott's here and Scott's going to come in with an overhead strike towards me. So if I'm standing here like that, Scott's going to step forward and he's going to strike. Okay. And so what you're wanting to do is basically move back just slightly. There you go. You're wanting to get this into where he's hitting with the edge of the weapon. This is the distance that he wants to be at. Okay? And so as he step, takes one step back, okay, as he steps in then, that's where he's going he's gonna to set his distance so that he hits me here. Likewise, if I'm here like this and I step back to here, I've now just slightly moved out of range. But it's not the same as if I was to try and show it and be in a stance like that. All I'm doing is moving from here to here. And what I've done is just move back about six inches. But regardless, Scott still is most definitely a threat. So if I'm here like this and Scott basically, he's going to come in to strike. I block, I'm set up right here to thrust down this throat. Okay, so one more time. And I come in here like this. So that would be the opening move. Now the next move of the form, we're here like this, and again, Scott comes in, he thrusts, is for me to flip this and thrust into the body here. Okay? And so, now what we'll do is we're going to translate this to the cane. So taking that, taking that form and applying it now more or less to kind of um, modern day weapons, you know, because nobody carries around a sword or, well, here in Texas they can. But I've only seen one person actually carrying around the sword here in Texas, and that was a year or so ago at a MAPA event out of White Rock Lake. And somebody actually rode up on a bike with a sword strapped across his back. But for the most part, that's the only person um, now in the last year or two that I've seen actually with, with a sword. So to say that you might get attacked by a sword, uh, maybe, but what Possibly you might get attacked, you know, uh, there's far greater chance you get attacked by somebody with like a shorter stick uh, or a uh, knife. So we're going to look at the knife today and um, the shorter stick. So obviously here what I have is reach, okay? My weapon here is a lot longer than his weapon so I have reach and I should use the reach as opposed to trying to engage him. Because the problem is, if we get in here close, and I am trying to do something, these kind of fancy moves in here like this, I'm in range for him to cut me. And it's far better that I use my longer range of this weapon to hit and to take away that weapon than to me to be really kind of on the inside of things, okay? Where I can be cut. So, if he had a stick, that's a different story. But with, a, but with any kind of an edged weapon, I want to stay outside as opposed to being in. All right? Because the important thing here with the knife is the longer that this is in, in contact with my hand or my body, the longer that knife edge is in contact with me, the uh, more damage it is doing. Okay? Whereas with an with a impact weapon, I hit and I strike, it is the force and speed of my strike. The mass of the weapon, the speed of my strike, you know, equals the force. And that's really what, I, what I'm looking at. Me bringing this up here and sliding it across his body like this does nothing to him. So me being in close, if he has a stick in that hitting my body or like here, that's not as big of an issue as if it was with a knife. If it, if it was a knife, any time that he comes in contact here again, he just draws us back. He doesn't need to be hitting hard. I'm potentially getting cut, okay? So with that being the case, um, let's have you do like an ice pick grip. So if he's got this in ice pick grip and he's going to step forward to, it, to attack, and if I'm here like this, 
Now in the form, it shows me to step forward, like here, okay? Well, I don't want to get closer to him when he's got a, when he's got an edge weapon like that. So as he goes to come forward, see, then I can step back and utilize the technique here. So once again, I hide this behind the back of my leg here so he doesn't see. As he steps forward, hold on a second, just step forward and, and are we in range is what I'm getting at. Just go ahead and step forward and, and plank this down, yeah. So we're in range here. I've got to, you know, get out of range as he comes in. So what Scott's going to do is as Scott comes in, I hit, then I can come back with, with the back in here. And if you notice, in the form it's like this, it's a thrust. Here, I just strike back. But it's the same motion, basically, with my hand. All right? So again, we're here. He goes to come in. I can hit, then I can thrust. Or, if we're here like this, now this time, um, go ahead and, and uh, put the knife up. Just, just stick it on the floor, there you go. Okay, so this time if I'm here like this and Scott goes to punch or reach or grab for me with this hand, see here now I can hit here and then come in with my thrust. Okay, but let's say that Scott's on the ball here. I hit his hand but he defends with his rear hand. Okay, and what Scott, what you don't want to do is that if I hit this front hand, he comes in, this hand gets hit. If I go to thrust back in here, he doesn't want to just put his hand up here and try and block his face, because I'm coming through. He wants to go here and stop my, my arm. So this stops my, moment, my momentum here, okay? Because if he just puts his hand up here to kind of lightly protect his face, I'll come right through it. So he's got to stop my arm. So if we're here like this and, the, and it comes and I hit, I step in to come here. Now what I use is that flip motion to clear his hand, to bring his down this way and to hit and thrust here, okay? So the motion is as I come in here, he stops it. And I'm gonna take his hand down and hit here then thrust in, all right? And so that's the opening moves that we uh, showed earlier with the, with the staff, all right? Thank you very much. What I'm gonna do is from here, step forward into, into knife. You don't wanna let me walk up to you this close or anything like that, okay? Because then I could draw out and, and cut. So you want to keep, you want to kind of keep me at bay. If I come in and it looks like I'm threatening to you or anything like this, you know, you can use verbal warning, stay away, whatever, what do you want, um, et cetera, et cetera. But if I'm here like this and I step forward, as I come in and you see the threat in this hand like that, step back and just smack the hand. So as I come in here like this, that's it. And then from here, you come right on back with the back hand, okay? So if I'm like this, and should...
Otherwise, the other way, I'm too close. And PV, all right, ready? Okay. So now, as you come in here like this, you don't want to stop this. This hand's hurt, probably. Mm -hmm. But this is trying to stop it. Now, from here, use this to bring it down and hit. That's it. Okay, so when I'm here, do, I, do you want me to step in? It's up to you. Actually, it probably would work better. That works out fine there. Come here, whatever. Okay? Yeah. You see what I mean? Uh, bring this over my wrist, like here, so this makes a, like an S lock. Okay. Right there. Good. There you go. Now you can also take this, let's go through the sequence again, but when I go to trap, trap your hand like that, just stop right there, okay, when I, when I defend. So now what you're going to do is let go of that and trap my hand, trap my hand right there. Bring this up and over, now you got an S-lock. Break my balance, there you go, like this. You let go here, strip this off. And then go. And then go. Okay? No, 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 I didn't. You gotta, see, you're coming over straight, like here, trap it. And bring this over, in, and that's it, like here. Okay? Now, just take this off, push down. Strip it. 